So first up, I'll introduce you to the music staff and hopefully some of you have been browsing our website and um, and we'll know these faces already. So uh, Mr. Norm Grimmett is the Director of Music and also teaches percussion and classroom music. Um, I'm the Instrumental Music Coordinator and teach violin and viola or upper strings. Tanya Berezin is our oboe and bassoon teacher. Kathy Bruce is our flute teacher. Evan Clements is uh, the brass teacher. He covers all the brass instruments, trumpet, trombone, French horn, euphonium and tuba, multi-talented man. Uh, Scott Copeman takes our senior vocal ensemble and is our uh, piano, piano accompanist resident extraordinaire. Uh, Annette Eldridge teaches cello and double bass. Now, unfortunately, Annette has a com commitment with another school tonight. So I'll be handling all the cello and double bass questions as well as violin and viola. So please be patient with me. Emily Fry teaches clarinet and saxophone. And most of you will already know Tina Marchant, who in addition to her year seven leadership responsibilities is a classroom music teacher. And together with Mr. Grimmett directs the Euphonics, our open entry choir. Uh, a short message now from our senior music captains for 2022, Sadaf and Samantha. Hi everyone, this is Sam and this is Sada, and, and we're, we're your 2022, 2022 music captains. So Sada, when did you start playing? I started playing in year six but continued it through the amazing music program at school. Sam, why did you start playing? Well, in year three, I actually saw this little girl performing on stage and I wanted to be like her. So I hope to inspire you guys to play as well. What's the best thing about music at EESC? I would have to say music camp, but I do have to mention that it is exclusively for music kids and for the senior ensembles. So if you work hard, you can make it. So Sam, what's been the best thing about music at East Doncaster? It's definitely the friendships you make here. I made a friends with a lot of amazing performers, just like this young, talented lady right now. I hope to see you guys around the beautiful pack with lovely orange seated. Yes, and don't be afraid to ask us for help, except for theory work, of course. Bye bye. Sam was, of course, joking about the theory work there. They're both very knowledgeable on their music theory. Um, both Sam and Sadaf are examples of students who uh, learnt their instruments before coming to East Doncaster. Um, Sam quite a few years before, as she said, in year three. And um, Sadaf learnt, started learning just before she came to East Doncaster. So good examples of students who've continued their music journey as they come into East Doncaster. Uh, I call, of course, most of the students here tonight might be looking at starting an instrument for the first time or starting a new instrument. Um, we take everybody and I'll talk about um, I'll talk about uh, the opportunities available to everybody very shortly. Now, our Year 7 students have already heard some performances at school by our beginner ensembles, and we do that explicitly as a demonstration of what students can achieve after e after less than a year of learning. Although it's not the same as the live performance, I'm going to show you some short recordings of some of our more advanced ensembles tonight to give you an idea of what groups sound like after a few years of tuition. So here's the first from our concert band, which is the middle wind ensemble for brass, woodwind and percussion students. Here are the concert band, uh, just a short little clip uh, conducted by Mr. Clements, our brass teacher.
All right, so that was our, our intermediate or our middle wind band. Um, normally our senior band would play at music information night, but uh, we had some video of the intermediate band, which was probably a little bit better in this format, uh, showing you more close ups of the instrument. So um, our intermediate band, are, we, we think they're still pretty good. They sound great. So there are new studies being released all the time showing the power of music on the brain. We still don't know exactly how or why it happens, but we do know that when people perform music, their brains light up more than virtually any other activity. Hundreds of respected studies coming out of the USA, UK, Australia and other countries have recognised the benefits of music and particularly music performance to a child's academic, social and emotional development. When you think about what's happening within the brain during the performance of music, we're reading and interpreting the maths on the page, using maths to work out rhythm, developing fine motor skills on our instrument and expressing emotion. There's literally no other activity that uses the whole brain in the same way as music performance. So as John Roberts said before, you've chosen a school in East Doncaster that values music as part of a broad education for your children. It's no coincidence that the top educational institutions around Australia and the world have ex exceptionally strong music programs. We sometimes hear from politicians about back to basics and crowded curriculum, but EDSE is a wonderful example of what's wrong with such a narrow focus. With the school's focus on the whole child, our academic results continue to climb alongside our co-curricular programs like instrumental music and sport. And that was demonstrated with our wonderful VCE results last year. Our school captains and those of other schools are more often than not involved in music and other co-curricular programs. So as much as we look forward to students beginning an instrument this year, we hope that some of you will look further and see music as a lifetime skill. Whether or not you choose music, a music career, music is invaluable in the benefits it gives you all the way through life. In fact, the University of Melbourne Faculty of Medicine has an orchestra. So does the engineering faculty and the law faculty. The, the university students in these orchestras and the senior student performers you see tonight are students who've learnt not just the importance of sticking at something and being organised, but they also recognise the importance of a balanced life in their higher education levels. So there are two streams to music at EDSC. Classroom music is compulsory for all students at year seven and eight, and then becomes elective in year nine. Instrumental music is optional at all year levels. Most years we have around a third of our year seven students selecting to learn an instrument, and the majority of our students continue learning, or at least performing in our ensembles all the way through school. So this creative outlet during the stress of the senior years is really beneficial for student mental health and well-being even apart from the academic benefits we heard about earlier. Furthermore, music is offered as a VCE subject, which is fantastic because it allows students who enjoy playing and are willing to put the practice time in to benefit from this in their VCE scores. Instrumental music lessons take place during normal class time, but on a rotating timetable so students don't miss the same classes each week. Lessons will usually be on the same day each week, but we usually rotate through period one the first week, period two the next week and so on. Instrumental music lessons and ensembles, ensemble rehearsals appear on every student's compass schedule, so it's nice and clear they know when they have their lesson, they know when they have their ensemble rehearsal every week. The music program at EDSC is an ensemble based program. So students perform in an ensemble firstly and are subsequently offered tuition on their instrument. This means that ensemble participation is compulsory. Research has proven that most of the benefits of learning, well, many of the benefits of learning a musical instrument are best achieved in an ensemble situation. The ensemble setting fosters working as a team, cooperation and compromise, social development and leadership skills. And because our ensembles are the focus of the program, we need to allocate our instrumental music places based on the needs of the ensembles. In the same way that, that a football team can't consist of 14 full forwards, we can't have a concert band full of flutes or a string orchestra full of violins. For this reason, your child is more likely to get a place on some instruments than others. More popular instruments include the flute and the violin. Picking lesser known instruments is a very clever thing to do as more opportunities can open up for players on certain instruments, 
such as the oboe, bassoon, trumpet, French horn, tuba, euphonium, trombone, cello, and double bass. A couple of instruments that we're especially keen to get students on this year are the clarinet, trumpet, and the trombone. Some students are more suited, sorry, some instruments are more suited to students who like a challenge. You can't necessarily pick, pick them up and make a good sound straight away. Uh, this includes the oboe, the bassoon, French horn, and most of the string instruments. Also, please remember that there's no such thing as a girls or boys instrument. There are many examples of professional men and women players on every instrument. Now, there's no denying that some instruments are louder than others. And parents, some of you might be thinking, I'm not having that in the house. There are some clever gadgets that make practicing much quieter, even in apartments with thin walls. So if you're interested in an instrument, say like the trumpet or the trombone, have a talk to the instrumental teachers who can explain to you how mutes work. And keep in mind that the benefits of learning an instrument are universal to all instruments. There probably won't be the perfect instrument for you. So the main thing is just to get involved in the program. Now the ensemble that your child participates in will be linked to their instrument. So woodwind, brass and percussion players will form the beginner band. And students who want to do percussion also in the beginner band, will learn how to play all the band percussion, including the drum kit. Violin, viola, cello, and double bass players make up our junior strings group. Whichever instrument you choose tonight, you must be able to attend to the appropriate rehearsal time. So the ensemble rehearsal times are in your handbook, and we, we can't keep tuition places for students who can't attend ensemble rehearsals. We also have choirs at EDSC. So all students are invited to join the Euphonics vocal group. This is a non-audition group and open to anyone who likes to sing and wants to get better. We also have an auditioned senior vocal group for more experienced singers. So you can join our choirs as well as learning an instrument, but you must be able to commit to attending your instrumental ensemble rehearsal and the choir rehearsal each week. Um, at this point, can I just point out a small mistake in an earlier version of the music handbook for those people who've had a look at that document. Um, the Euphonics vocal group rehearsed before school on Tuesday mornings. Um, I believe in an earlier version of the handbook, it was uh, it indicated that the Euphonics rehearse on Wednesday afternoons, so that's incorrect. Um, I'll refer you to the EDSC music website a bit later on in this session, and um, that now has the updated handbook with the correct Euphonics vocal group rehearsal time before school on Tuesday mornings. Now, we all know that singing has been difficult at school for some time now. There have been restrictions on rehearsing and mask requirements, but around all of this, a core group from our senior vocal group were absolutely determined to prepare something for you tonight. So over the past week, they've been rehearsing this beautiful song, which I'm sure you'll all recognise. So here is a small cohort from our senior vocal group, accompanied by Mr. Scott Copeland.
So that was our, uh, a, a small part of our senior vocal group. Now, we usually have a number of students who come in at year seven with a strong piano background. I know we also have a number of guitar players um, out there amongst the year seven cohort. Now, unfortunately, guitar and piano don't fit into our large ensembles at this point in time, so we aren't able to offer lessons on those instruments at school. However, you will find that previous, previous experience in learning these instruments will help in starting a new instrument. So please consider um, a new instrument if you are a piano player or a guitar player. Um, now, this is especially the case for piano players who tend to have very strong theory knowledge. And piano players are perfect for percussion as the tuned instruments like the xylophone and marimba will be immediately familiar to them. The ensemble rehearsal times, which are in your handbook, are vitally important when considering your instrument choices. So again, students must be able to attend the appropriate weekly rehearsal for their instrument. Some ensembles rehearse before school and some after school. It's also an expectation, of course, that students attend their ensemble's performances throughout the year. Please don't assume that your child is expendable from a performance. Um, every player in a sports team is vital and it's no different for music. Uh, sports players would never consider missing the grand final and every concert is like a grand final for us. Um, we also have opportunities for students who want to be involved in the performing arts, but who aren't necessarily keen to be on stage. Performance also involves backstage audio and lighting crew. We're very keen to talk to any students who would like to look into these sorts of roles. Now, the instrumental music levy is $475 for the year, which those of you who've in, um, engaged in private lessons will know is a fraction of the cost of having private tuition outside of school. Now, this $475 covers all lessons and ensemble rehearsals, rehearsals, excursions, bus costs and competition and festival registration fees that may come up throughout the year. We also welcome students who learn, learn their instruments outside of school into our ensembles. Now, the cost to these students is $120, which again covers music and excursion costs. Now, there's a slight difference. If, if a student only wants to do a vocal group, the cost is only $40. Um, so I'll point out that you only pay one levy, either the instrumental music levy if you're having lessons at school or the ensemble levy if you're not having lessons at school. Um, now, one payment covers you for as many ensembles as you would like to play in. So a student can have lessons play in the ensemble for their instrument and do a choir or for the $475 levy. Um, or a student who learns outside of school can play in a band and do a vocal group for the one ensemble levy of $120. Now, all students in the instrumental music program need to buy the performance uniform, which is also detailed in the music handbook. We've recommended supplies with the specific intention of keeping uniform costs low, but as with the core school uniform, please make sure that you buy the uniform items that we have specified. Then the only additional costs that you may occur, incur are, of course, the instrument purchase or hire. And um, our music captains refer to the music camp before which members of our senior music ensembles are expected to attend. So not something that most of our year sevens would be looking at at this point in time. Um, now, in addition to the lesson fees, students will generally need to buy one or two books throughout the year as well. Most of the beginner method books come in around the 20 to $40 mark. So let's talk about getting hold of an instrument. EDSC has a very limited number of instruments for hire and preference for these goes to year seven beginners. Now we don't have any flutes, so if flutes your instrument, you will need to buy. Clarinets, violins and violas are also not unreasonably expensive for a student level in instrument. Um, we wouldn't normally expect students to buy the more expensive or larger instruments like the oboe, bassoon, euphonium, tuba or double bass at year seven. Students who learn these large instruments generally use school instruments at school and keep their higher instrument at home. So you don't need to go lugging a tuba or a double bass on the bus. I would like to ask you to keep a couple of points in mind when choosing whether to hire or buy. Hiring is putting money in somebody else's pocket. At the end of the hire period, you hand the instrument back and you have nothing to show for it. Buying obviously costs more, more upfront, but instruments tend not to depreciate greatly. So even down the track, if you need to sell it, you'll have something in your pocket. You'll also have a new instrument and generally students tend to look after their own things a little bit better. 
Some stores offer a great higher than buy, where if you initially hire the instrument and then decide to buy, um, the store will deduct the higher cost from the purchase price. Now, I would stress to all of you to please not make a commitment to hiring or buying an instrument until you have notification from us as to what instrument your child has been accepted on. When we send your acceptance, we will also provide advice on where to source good quality instruments. There is also some useful advice on which brands we recommend in the music handbook. I need to point out that buying a cheap instrument from eBay or Gumtree or from overseas without communicating with the music staff often results in an instrument that's difficult to tune, difficult to play on, and can be extremely discouraging to the student. You get what you pay for, and just because it's cheap, it isn't necessarily something your child should be learning on. Now, once your child has committed to the instrumental music program, we ask that they commit to their lessons for the full year. For some students, the novelty of the instrument wears off quicker than others and the work sets in. We as teachers help the students through this, and you, and you as parents can offer support as well through gentle encouragement um, and gentle persistent reminders of practice. We strongly suggest setting up a practice routine as early as possible. We find the best way is to have a set practice time on set days of the week. And another way you can help, of course, is to become an active participant in the music program by joining EDSC's Parents and Friends Association, who assist at many of our concerts throughout the year. Now we're almost there and it's time for our final short performance, the Senior Chamber Strings Ensemble. Now this is our most advanced group for violins, violas, cellos and double basses. And um, here's a short recording of the chamber strings to hear what a more senior string orchestra sounds like. Okay, so that was our senior chamber strings ensemble for violin, viola, cello, and double bass players. All right, we're almost there, um, everybody. Now, um, how to choose your instrument. I'm well aware that there'll be some students who already know their preference of instruments, but for others, it can be a little bit of choice paralysis. So here are some key questions that you should ask yourself to narrow down, now narrow your choice down. Start with, do you prefer the sound of higher or lower instruments? Then, do you generally prefer the sound of the wind instruments or the string instruments 
or do you like the rhythmic beats of percussion? And of course, if you like percussion, you do in effect get to learn many, many different tuned and untuned instruments in that category. So once you've asked yourself those two questions, we can start to narrow our choices down according to this chart, which is also on the EDSC Music web page. So if you like the lower sounds and wind more than strings, you could look at the euphonium, the tuba or the bassoon. Now, I've also put a middle category in here too for students who don't have a strong preference for higher or lower instruments. The trombone, viola and tenor sax are useful instruments that kind of so, sort of sit in the middle and can't really be categorised as exceptionally low or high. Now, for students who are interested in the saxophone, you'll notice that I've listed both the alto and the tenor saxophone in the woodwind column on this chart. When you fill in your enrolment form, we've just asked you to put saxophone. If, you, if you're successful in getting a place on the saxophone, uh, Mrs Fry will have a talk to you in your first lesson and work out which will be the best option for you, given your physical size and our numbers. So very shortly, I will tell you how to fill out your enrolment form with your preferred instruments. As I said earlier, we can't take every student on their preferred instrument, so, so we do ask for at least two preferences. We don't want anybody to miss out in it, um, on the benefits of being in the music program. So it is important to utilise these second and even third preferences. So you still have the opportunity to participate, even if you don't get your first preference. Now, once you're accepted, you will be notified by the end of this week of your child's instrument and their first scheduled lesson. Lessons will start as early as next Monday. Now, it's very important that students do try and attend their first lesson next week, even if they haven't got an instrument yet. Because if they miss next week's lesson, they won't have their first lesson until after the year seven camp. Um, now, instrumental music teachers, just talking to you for a second, if you could please go and start your meetings now um, and remember to open the meeting options to all participants um, so that everybody can admit themselves and, um, and allow people to bypass the lobby. So here's what everybody needs to do when we finish up this presentation. So make sure that you've read the music handbook and fully understand the structure of the program, including the requirement to, to, to participate in the appropriate ensemble for the instrument. The handbook is available on the EDSC music page and I'll give you that link shortly. We'd like you to talk to the instrumental music teachers in the breakout rooms if you have any questions, um, but perhaps even more importantly, use the instrument videos that the teachers have put on the EDSC music page um, it will be difficult to get through everybody's questions tonight in the breakout sessions. Now, when you've decided on your preferences, fill in the enrolment form that will go live tonight on the EDSC music page at 8 o'clock p.m. We want you to have time to discuss your preferences, do your research about the instruments and make a decision that you are happy with. We do want to give you time to think about your preferences. So we'll treat all enrolments received in the next 24 hours equally. So you don't need to rush your decisions tonight. We do usually manage to place the vast majority of students on their first preference of instrument, but please remember this is a fantastic opportunity no matter which instrument you end up being offered. Just because you haven't heard of an instrument before today doesn't mean it's not going to be great for you. Now, after you've submitted your enrolment preferences, please wait to hear from us. Please don't pay any money until you hear from us and please don't buy an instrument until you hear from us. When the acceptances are sent out via email, that's when we'll provide you with the information on getting hold of an instrument. Now, placements will be decided by the end of this week and sent out via the parent email address you have registered on Compass. So please make sure that you do have a parent email address that you check regularly, otherwise you may miss out on your acceptance email. And of course, students should also make sure that they're checking their EDSC email consistently. Then once you have your acceptance email, you'll notice the instrumental music levy appearing on your Compass parent dashboard under upcoming events. So the levy can be paid directly through Compass by clicking on that link. Um, payments should be made before the first instrumental music lesson wherever possible. Again, it's important for your child to attend their first lesson as the following week is the year seven camp. So firstly here is the link to the EDSC music page if you haven't visited it already. Um, this page has general information on the music program, a meet the instruments and teachers section, the music handbook, 
and most importantly, a link to the enrolment form, which will open up at 8 p.m. tonight. And below that are the links to the Instrumental Music Teachers' Own meetings, so you can ask any questions you have related to those instruments. Um, again, I'll be handling all the string inquiries for viola, violin, cello and double bass, so please be patient with me tonight. Um, as you can imagine, it won't be possible for everybody to talk over each other, so you won't be able to use your microphones. Instead, please use the chat function and the teachers will do their best to respond by speaking and typing in the chat where they can. To assist with this process, can I please ask you to scroll back through the chat occasionally um, just to see if your question had, has already been asked and answered by another parent. Um, you will be able to jump in and out of instrumental me meetings by typing these links into your browser if you want to visit more than one instrument type. Um, I'll put all these li links in the meeting chat for this meeting as well. Um, if you are interested in the vocal groups, Mrs Marchant will hang around in this meeting to answer any questions that you may like to put to her through the chat. Um, and I will leave this meeting open so that you can rejoin if you need to remind yourself of these links.